I just want to do a little quick work on the bridge dome and the A um, B C deck complex here for the top of the of the vessel. And uh, one of the issues um, to go to put these uh, decals on is that the um, the grid lines, the scribing uh, on the part. Um, is not correct in relation to the decals and um, I believe it was Gary Kerr one of the gentlemen who worked on this kit and who is an expert on the original studio model sent to one of our one of the moderators on sci-fi uh, sci-fi model action forums a notice about this issue and how they really should go and um, apparently the manufacturing plant in China was given instructions to correct these issues to their proper sizes uh, but they didn't get them corrected before the kit went into production but Gary points out that the decals are the right size and I had forgotten about this until I decided to go put these decals on and then I remember seeing the posting and I'll put the the graphic from Gary Kerr up on the screen here uh, so you can see it and see the changes I would have considered rescribing these, but I also went out and looked at some um, photos of the original studio model, and I don't see any scribing lines. To me, they are just decals or paint. Uh, these things are just painted on. So I could have just went ahead and filled these in uh, before I painted all this up, sanded it down smooth, and came back and put the decals on, and that's what I should have done. Unfortunately, I as I said, I'd forgotten all about it, went ahead and done everything up, decided, well, let me go put the decals on tonight. It's a quick little uh, job for this, and now I've got to make a decision on what I'm going to do. And I can either just go ahead and lay the decals on it uh, with the grid lines incorrect. This isn't long, en uh, long enough. Or I could, I suppose, I could go back and fill them in and sand it and repaint everything, but I'm not going to do that. Um, or I could cut the decals down so that they actually fit the um, etched or engraved line areas and I think that's what I'm going to do because I definitely don't want this uh, line telescoping through the decal which like for this one here decal number seven it would obviously uh, be coming right through here so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the decal down, put this in place, and um, trim off the red line at the bottom, add it back up on there, and do the exact same thing for decal number eight And uh, for this time. For my next build of this model, and I already have another one of these, a Premier Kit Edition. This is the first Premier Kit, kit Edition I have, and I have another one for later. Uh, I will definitely go ahead and fill these in and uh, so I can just pop, pop them on there in their correct positions without any issues. Well, let me go ahead and do that and then we'll take a look at that. Well that one's in place and what I did was as I said I cut them down to fit the um, the etched lines so basically all you do is you go in and as you, you go in and you measure it off and you cut it off put the first larger piece on and then you come back and cut just the red line off on the bottom and then you add that on top of the other decal so it lines up perfectly across and you can get that to match after you get that in and, and as you can see you can't even see the um, the cut lines on this one um, these decals are pretty nice um, decals so as part of this one of the things that I I use um, a setting solution from Microscale Industries called Microset, uh, which is a um, it softens in the decal and it also promotes uh, the decal to set. Now, what I originally do is I put it in the water. These decals, I only I dip it in there, hold it in there for like five seconds, pull it out, set it down here on my ceramic tile, let it sit there for a few seconds about 15 to 20 seconds and they were ready to slide off right off the bat um, then after the and I put them on here a little uh, I used water on the base with a little microset 
mixed together and put them in place and then uh, after they're in place I put a little micro set on top what I will do after that dries up and I, right now I don't want to push it around there's still little bubbles on there but after um, I mean um, solution on there um, but after that sets up and dries I will go back in and I will put microsol on there uh, so the red lines will dip down into that etched line and conform really good um, to the piece and after that's done um, this will be ready. There's no other decals. It's one thing great about this particular kit, the original series Enterprise, there's very little decal work uh, to do on it at all. So the next one will be uh, will be to get this one on in place. Now you can see how I've went ahead and applied the first half of this one on the bottom and I cut out cut the bottom off and I trimmed it back and I have just this little red line that will end up going down here on the bottom. Now because this um, decal is going to be fitting over this curved section on the BC deck, um, it's not going to want to lie flat because this is obviously uh, a compound curve. It's curving this way. It's also curving this these directions as it's getting down here. So it's going to want to pucker up some. What you need to do is remember to go ahead and lay it down on there. Um, take a Q-tip or a um, piece of paper towel and just lightly tap it, and then let it dry up a little bit. Let it set a little bit, and come back and put Microsol from Microscale Industries which is another type of setting solution. This one softens the decals and this product is very strong. It will um, make the decal conform to the surface of the model. And uh, what they say on here is softens decals to conform to irregular surfaces for a painted on look. I've used this product a lot for a long time. It really does. If you use it right, it really does do that. And then you let this dry. I'm going to end up letting this dry overnight. I'm not going to touch it anymore. It may need another coat of the Microsol on top of it. But even though you see these little puckers, uh, as it dries and everything, it's going to suck it down and it will end up being flat on the surface of the model. So, tomorrow I will come back and um, add this little piece down here on the bottom and go through the same procedure for this so I need to make sure I save this little piece and don't lose it because it's critically important. Um, that's how you can use these products. This one for general setting and this one uh, for really irregular services works really really good. Okay I just wanted to take a moment and show you the results of the setting solutions. Uh, this is obviously following day and I want you to, so you can see this uh, really good, the um, setting solution has pulled the decal completely down and it completely conforms to that compound curve surfaces on, on the back of this model piece and looks really nice. So I'm really pleased with how that turned out. Uh, even though it puckered up, the um, micro, Chris, uh, I'm sorry, the micro solutions, the uh, microsol did a very good job and got that to sit down absolutely perfectly on the part. Well one of the issues I have discovered uh, about this lighting kit is that um, the nav lights on the top of the saucer which go at this location up here and opposite um, down there can be filled in with clear parts or that you can cover with a clear green and clear red or you can put um, the solid colored clear parts that come with the lighting kit in there. The kit parts that come with the lighting kit uh, the color of the plastic is obviously what you'd be using is the green and red but it's so th dark uh, that the lighting kit light that you use at these locations 
which this one LED which goes here is meant to light that and the white light on the underside of the saucer which is adjacent to this this um, really isn't bright enough to light that green and red up um, bright enough so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that um, with some of my own lights um, LEDs of which I have some of these lighthouse LEDs which are 18,000 millicads um, that I'm going to wire up and replace and I'm going to end up using two of them and here's one of them what it looks like so what's nice about these is they will fit down into the hole quite nicely nice and snug so I'll just take the kit part and um, grind it down a little bit so I'll take the kit part which is one like this one uh, with a little stem on it which I've already shaved off on this green part um, and here's the clear part that comes well these come with the lighting kit and this is the clear part that comes with the kit normally I've already painted it uh, with Tamiya green clear um, but what I'm going to try is shaving these pins off you can see those so that they're nice and flat like this one is let me see if I can pick that up right there it's already nice and flat and I already ground a little indention into it so what I'll do is I'll take some epoxy and I'll glue it onto the other side of the hole just a little dab just like that uh, or maybe some CA I have to see and um, now that will cloud the plastic a regular little bit of regular epoxy so it will sit up on top of this lighthouse like that I do have to grind the lighthouse uh, LED down just slightly so that it's flush with the with the underside of the hull I mean the top side of the hull so it will fit nice and snug and level in there and what I'll do is I'll put one for the green nav and opposite of this on the um, on the uh, lower hull which is this right here there's these um, clear or white which go right there and I'll use another one to light those up so that's the experiment and I've already got everything worked out with the resistor that I need I need a hundred ohm resistor to fire these off with the amount of current that's going through the circuit you, know, you plug these up the normal up on the um, circuit board so I have my resistors so I'll go ahead and get one of these mocked up fully wired up and we'll give it a test now to grind this um, lighthouse LED down I'm going to use my Dremel stylus with this wheel and just um, slowly grind it down on the top of the wheel and I'll do the test fitting um, into the holes to see to it that it all fits Okay, um, in case someone asks, the LEDs that I'm using, as I said, are lighthouse LEDs, and these are 2 millimeter, and they have a forwarding current of, of 20 milliamps and a voltage of 3.2 to 3.4, and they are 18,000 millicad. So they're nice and bright, not over the top bright given the type of LEDs that they are, uh, the design of them, but they are nice and bright. Now the stem on these, okay the stem on these is about 5 millimeters and I need to take it down to being About two and a half millimeters um, for it to fit on the hull properly. So this one's already been done; it's already been shortened, and this one I need to grind down 
to get it to the same length. So, using this one as my guide, I'm going to go ahead and grind this one down. Pair it up to the first one, and I need to take it down some more. And we'll measure it up here. Yep, just this tiny fraction. And let me make sure I have this one. Done up straight. So these guys are pretty close to being even with each other so those should be good to go so next thing I'll do is I'm going to wire these up these two guys up in series um, with this one resistor which is a hundred ohm um, carbon film resistor and we'll go ahead and see about getting those mounted in position for testing on the hollow parts well I thought I'd show you the fit so We'll go ahead and put it in. Now, uh, these fit perfectly from the outside in. Um, so I just had to put a little grinding bit in and just open this up a little bit on this side. And I think it was just because of my paint blocking. So that goes, that'll go in like that. And on the other side of the hull, it is perfectly flush is exactly what I wanted and then um, the little dome which let me see if I can do this with my fingers will sit on top of that glued in just like that nice and flush right on the top and that should fire off and look pretty good uh, there's another little green little um, piece of plastic here for this side and the other side is part of the nav structure. I'm not attempting to light that. The actual lighting kit doesn't really light it and that piece falls so close to the, um, the seam of where the other the um, lower half of the hull fits onto the upper. It comes right across here and it's just pretty much impractical to light that. I don't even know if that was lit on the studio model. I have no video footage that gets close enough to that uh, to even see so I'm not going to bother with that little green piece but I'm going to go ahead and do this for these and there'll be two. One here and I'll bend these down and one for the um, lower hull and both of them will get wired up to replace this one LED right here that came in the lighting kit Okay, now here's an example of the NAVs. What I've done is I've used two different type of LEDs to replace this particular LED for the NAV lights that are on the upper and lower part of the saucer. The lower part is a clear um, dome and the upper part will be lit um, for either a red or green dome based upon the port or starboard side. Now these LEDs that I'm using for the bottom the way the kit part is made uh, which is a flat piece on top that pops in with the pin dome on the underside uh, 
I have used a 1.8 millimeter uh, LED and let me pull one of those out so you can see it and again this is one of those um, hopefully you can see it right there and what I've done is I've gone in and I've ground down that dome lens on top so it was nice and flat and that I put on top of the kit part and I glued it in place with some of my cool shot low temp hot glue which holds it in quite nicely there's no way for that to move and then I held in the cabling the electrical wires for it now the top LED is a two millimeter um, lighthouse style now it's what I'm using is clear now this is a red one so you can see it better and what I've done is I have as I showed earlier I've ground it down uh, to the appropriate th uh, height so when it fits into the upper hull it'll be flush with the top of the hull on the outside so I can glue the dome right down onto t the top of this and the um, the 1.8 millimeter for underneath is a 7000 millicandle LED and the um, 2 millimeter lighthouse uh, LED is an 18,000 millicad. Um, I'm sorry, millicandles. I'm used to too much Star Trek 3 talk for with Klingons. Um, so they'll be bright. Uh, they won't be overly bright as you saw for the the 1.8 millimeter, which lights up more like a strobe should. Uh, comparing that to the kit part, which is this right here, which was meant to light both the upper and the lower. This is a warm temperature LED, which I don't think looks right. Um, it's nice to have all the windows of the starship lit with warm light, and it's nice to have the nav lights look a little differently. So I'm using the white, the bright white, or the cool white LEDs for that. This um, concaved top LED, as I might have mentioned earlier in one of the videos uh, segments, I just don't think is bright enough to light them up. And when you put the colored dome on the top side um, or if you use the clear and you coat them with Tamiya clear red or green it just doesn't light up enough to even hardly even notice unless you have the lights completely off in the room so I really wanted to replace this now this is this is using on a circuit of about 3.11 volts and what's nice is the two LEDs that I'm using here both fire off nice and bright using that same voltage um, so I don't have to worry about anything all I have to do is take the kit wiring and cut this LED off the end of it and solder it onto the leads uh, for the um, for my little wiring harness here and everything works perfectly fine so that's what I'm going to be doing uh, for this one for the opposite side over here which I've already got the uh, LEDs in place and all I need to do is solder this on and coat it in tool dip like I've done here so I make sure that I, nothing ever touches when I put this together and have any type of um, uh, um, faults, shorts or anything. Now these I'm going to actually glue down to the hole so they're not sticking up so everything's nice and neat so when all, all I'll have to do when I go to put the two halves together is pop this in place and put some glue on it and hold it there for a moment. I'm going to be using some hot glue and it'll hold it in place and then I'll be ready to um, go ahead and, and close up the saucer hull with those because that's the last thing I have left to do um, to get this going and I've been delayed for a good while because uh, my soldering iron went out and I've got a new system which is this thing right here which is really nice because it's got a nice uh, digital control system on it and it heats up super fast and I can control the temperature very precisely and it works really really well I'm very very pleased with it um, does a great job so I'm going to um, go ahead and get that done and we'll see what those strobes look like okay this is the top of the saucer and um, this is what the lights look like before the colored dome pieces get put in place on that side and over here on this side and this light here in the front uh, was too bright I had frosted the other ones with some 
uh, with some white on the inside um, to tone them down but I forgot to do this piece right here so because I've already got this almost ready to be sealed up and cabling's all together what I did was I decided to try a little piece of very thin styrene which is this right here and I put it, it up underneath the, the clear part glued it in real fast with some with some hot glue and it diffused the light <laughs> actually it ended up diffusing the light to by my eye a perfect match to these other ones which I was really impressed with I really lucked out on that so that's ready to go next thing to do is to go ahead and put the color parts on uh, here and here and on the opposite side and then I need to go ahead and wire up the lights for the bridge and I'll be able to put the dome in place and then I'll be able to seal up the um, the saucer well there are the nav lights on the top of the saucer installed I uh, just got done using some five minute epoxy to glue them down they're still setting up um, and the reason of course why I used the epoxy was because of the LED uh, the stem of the lighthouse LED coming up to the flush with the hull I had to uh, grind cut off and grind down the stem that's on the kit part on the light kit part which are cast in red I tried these um, with the light kit parts before and um, they were too way too dark with the original kit LED and then I clear coated the clear parts that come in the regular kit with Tamiya red and green and those are too light now uh, but the uh, colored kit lighting kit parts plastic parts are perfect for that for this with the new LEDs in place so they're nice and bright and they're not the I mean on the red before you could even hardly tell it was even coming on um, this little nav light thing or whatever on the side has also been epoxied in but that's in place and on the opposite side, on the starboard side, is the green. And I'm going to let those set up for a few minutes. And those, uh, that's work, going to work out perfectly. I'm really pleased with how bright they are. Uh, looking at footage uh, from the TV show, uh, these are, in my opinion, really close now to how bright they were on the actual studio model. So I'm really, really happy with this. You can never get these parts um, nowhere near this bright uh, with the lighting kit. And I think if round two makes changes to their lighting kit, they really ought to consider uh, putting two LEDs in place for this um, to light these up because this is a much, much better solution. So I'm really pleased. That looks really nice. So the next thing up will be to um, add the lighting to the little bridge module and I'll be able to put the dome in place although I may, I may do that afterwards I think what I want to do now is go ahead and seal this up be nice to have one major hull component complete I've got the dorsal, the neck uh, sealed up, it would be nice to get the saucer sealed up so I think I'll leave that for the next next build video to move on so I want to thank everyone for watching and happy modeling everyone <laughs>